In 1903, the Wright brothers made their famous 12-second, 120-foot flight. And ever since Wilbur yelled, hey, Orville, make sure your seatbelt is fastened and tray table is stowed, men have dominated the profession of airline pilot. Now, female pilots may be smaller in number, but certainly not in skill. They took to the skies and soared through ceilings of glass and clouds. And that may not have been an exact Wilbur quote. These are the names and faces of some of the world's first female flyers, all of them pioneers. At the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation in Detroit, Matt Anderson and I discussed a few of these fearless pilots. Why is Amelia Earhart so iconic? Yeah, Amelia Earhart is arguably the best known female pilot even today. And I think part of that reason is she did have some really significant accomplishments. She was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic in 1928, though she flew as a passenger. They actually wouldn't allow her even to touch the controls, which speaks a little bit to the attitudes of the time. Then in 1932, just four years later, she does fly legitimately solo, transatlantic across the, the ocean with herself at the control. On this flight, Really no bad weather at all except a few little rain squalls. In addition to her many aviation achievements, Amelia was an entrepreneur as well. Her name was attached to apparel like this suede blouse and sophisticated luggage. Today we take for granted that singers and actors have their own clothing lines and accessories and all of this. Amelia was kind of pioneering that in the 1930s. And she did it not so much for personal fame or fortune, but she could use the money from those endorsement deals to then fund further flying effort. But women were flying even before Amelia. The first woman in the world to receive her pilot's license was Raymond de la Roche of France in 1910. In 1911, Harriet Quimby became the first American woman to receive her pilot's license. Who was Harriet Quimby? Harriet Quimby was an early, uh, sort of a demonstration, almost stunt flyer. And uh, she was pretty well known for not only having a great deal of skill, but also a bit of showmanship in her flying. She wore a purple satin suit that kind of stood out, and she had some product endorsements with Vin Fizz, grape soda, so really made a name for herself. Another early pilot, Katherine Stinson, was known for her skillful stunts and youthful appearance. Newspaper reporters called her the flying schoolgirl. Other aircraft pioneers. Yeah, there are other famous names of Ruth Law. She was a contemporary of Katherine Stinson's, an early aerobatic pilot, and she became uh, kind of a forceful voice for advocating women in combat roles in World War I in her case. And another one I think of when you talk about breaking barriers, Bessie Coleman, absolutely, the first African-American woman or man to earn a pilot's license. And in fact, she faced so much discrimination here in the U.S. that she couldn't even find anyone to train her here. She had to go to France to earn her license. And, and, wait, so, and she flew in France and then later over here? Yes, later came back flew over here and again an exceptionally skilled stunt pilot who is eleanor smith eleanor smith was one of the more colorful of the early female aviators in fact in 1928 she made quite a splash by flying underneath at that time all four bridges in new york city whoa <laughs> yeah a gutsy move for sure despite the early accomplishments of these intrepid pioneers it would take years for women to be hired as pilots by major commercial airlines and i have another name to add Beverly Bass, the first woman to be a captain on a major American airline. And she is the subject of the Broadway musical Come From Away. Fantastic. Yeah. All of these women and more were women we can all look up to for their skill, courage, and spirit.